Enter flump.jpg. A flump floats up to them. Aww, that PNG. He says, I hear you eventuals were working for the sword of Cass. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, what's up, Sky Skydiver here, throwing a meter party. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Welcome to another D&D Green Text video. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Before jumping into today's video, I just want to quickly kindly ask you if you're not yet subscribed to the channel to consider doing so now. It only takes a moment and you can undo it later if you want. And uh, yeah, with that being said, thanks so much and I hope you enjoyed the video. The placebo sword. Be me, fighter. Be not me, the other guys. We meet a goblin merchant who sells, among other things, a glowy magic sword for 50 gold. The DM makes it pretty clear that the goblin and his wares are sketchy AF. The quote-unquote magic sword is indeed glowing, but that's because it's a regular sword smeared with ground-up phosphorescent mushrooms. <laughs> I mean, that's really creative though, you gotta give the goblin a little credit for that. <laughs> that is really creative. Think, look at my 7 wisdom. I ask the DM if I can roll an insight check, because I figure that I'm dumb enough to fall for it. The DM agrees. I roll a 1, and minus 2 for a total of minus 1, of course. No, but you see guys, we're dangerous heavily armed adventurers. Surely this goblin wouldn't risk antagonizing us, so that means it must be legit. IRL, everyone loses it. In game. The other characters kind of shrug and figure it's my money, so it's my problem. I buy the sword, and later there's a big fight. I proceed to roll stupidly well for the entirety of the fight, I miss basically no attacks, and I crit the boss twice in one round. Clear MVP. Wow guys, this sword is amazing, what a bargain! <laughs> I know it's a really short story, but that was really good roleplay from the fighter, I just wanna point that out. How the cleric won our whole nautical campaign in one turn, just finished fighting a bunch of pirates and took over their ship. It's only sinking a little bit and we only burned the mainsail and put a 10 foot wide hole under the waterline. Hey, that was a pretty easy fight, none of us even really got hurt, nice. The DM starts cackling and starts unhiding a bunch of things on the roll 20 map. Eight great big tentacles thrust forth from the water and latch onto the ship, trying to grab anyone on the deck. My face when it's a <coughs> colossal kraken. Wizard, which is me, gets a natural 20 on initiative and then flubs a damage spell and it doesn't even connect. Face, the sorcerer, swims down to talk to it and fails to persuasion it into eating our enemies instead. The local murder hobo, the fighter, lines up a big attack but isn't able to swim close enough yet. The rogue, which is the Roge, coerces some surviving pirates into loading one of the anti-ship ballistae on the board and then fires it at a tentacle, and then only rolls like 12 damage lol. <laughs> the cleric goes last and takes a minute to read her spell sheet. Hey DM, can you have it make a wisdom saving throw? Uh, sure, that's a 13. Okay. Then my spell works. What spell? The cleric's mic was broken, so this was all happening through some combination of Discord text chat, playing telephone with the sorcerer who had his own headset and was sitting in the same room as her, and roll 20 commands. The cleric pastes the spell description into Discord. It's mother <coughs> Gias. Nice, so you're probably going to tell it to Lee. I cast it at 7th level, so the command lasts for one year. <laughs> What? Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, goddamn. Okay, what command do you tell it? Keep it simple, please. There is a pause. Destiny called, fate stretched out before us, and we could all feel the weight of history about to be made. Discord. Cleric is typing. I suspect the DM started sweating. <laughs> Protect us. And that's how my party now has a f Leviathan as our pet guard dog. <laughs> That's gonna get interesting after a year passes and the command wears off. I I'm curious how that's gonna play out, but um, yeah, that's gonna be fun for a year. <laughs> I guess a really good, you know, way this could go would be if the Leviathan just dies <laughs> protecting the party. That would solve an issue, that would solve a later issue. Being congratulated for a roleplay that was part of a failed min-max attempt. I've posted some stories from my experience as a DM of terrible players, sociopathic players and ridiculous DMs. The horror in this one is a bit subtle, 
but I think you'll like it. This was for a one-shot game, planned to go for about 5 hours and level 10 characters set in the Forgotten Realms. We could use any Forgotten Realm book and Magic of Faerun had just been published. It included the spell Undeath After Death, and I built a character around that spell. The spell brings you back as an undead creature, the most generic undead ever after you die, and it costs 2 points of constitution to use. Start with 9 constitution. I use the older characters rules to be in the oldest age category. Plus 3 intelligence, wisdom and charisma, minus 6 strength, dexterity and constitution. Minus 2 constitution for using the spell, that meant that my wizard had 1 hit point per level. 10 hit points at level 10. The game was max health per level, so the barbarian had 150 hit points. The plan was simple. The moment my character takes one solid hit, he's going to die, but then immediately come back as a crypt spawn. He'd have no constitution score and Undead meant d12 hit dice, so he'd have 120 hit points and be immune to a lot of things that usually kill wizards. Except, he didn't die. Through all the combats, I played him like a cautious old wizard making creative use of his spells to avoid danger and hinder enemies. Not cowardly, but also not suicidal. We completed the module and everyone is thoroughly congratulating me on being the first person they've seen play an old character in a believable manner. I couldn't bring myself to reveal that my hope had been for him to get splattered in the first combat. <laughs> oh god, oh god. <laughs> I mean, it didn't go as planned for the min-maxing wizard, <laughs> but it went well for the party, so that's what matters, right? <laughs> My players fell for a trick that they should have known was a trick. Be me, the DM, be not me, Earthbending Monk and Gunslinger. We are in the middle of a large city owned by a corrupt tech company whose backstory is too long to write here. The PCs are going after the Sword of Cass to defeat the owner of the company who is a leech. Enter Flump.jpg. A flump floats up to them. Aww, that PNG. He says, I hear you adventurers were working for the sword of Cass. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They listen. He then says, would you like to buy it for 2GP? <laughs> My players, oh, so dumb, take him up on the offer because it's only 2 gold. Enter a time skip. My players, attack the now godlike leech who has ascended because his tech was so great. They jab him with the sword of Cass and it breaks on impact. And it turns out that it was fake. And then my party ran away from the big bad evil guy <laughs> to kill a random flump. <laughs> TLDR, my players run from God to kill a flump that scammed them. This is actually kind of incredible that they believe that I mean it's wh what the <laughs> Without even the slightest sign of doubt or you know questioning it or anything. No, just straight up, yeah this seems fine. <laughs> I'm going to become a literal Egyptian plague. Be me, a recently leveled up level 7 druid. Be talking to the DM about my possible new summons. Ask about Chwingas. Not only legal, but the DM loves them. I go read about charms. Some are actually really freaking busted by the way. Charm of the Swollen Hag for example. This charm allows you to spit up a frog as an action. The frog understands you and obeys your commands and once used 3 times, the charm goes away. Not temporary summon, no beast tag replaced, it's just a frog, a real frog. But they're gonna die by the cold, my DM says, cause we're in an arctic setting by the way. Charm of the snow walker, my frogs are safe around me. I start to calculate how many frogs can fit in a 15 feet radius? <laughs> Up to 49 squares, but only 48 considering my PC as at the center. Considering how frogs are tiny, we can say you can fit 4 on each square. Probably more, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt. They're chunky ones or something. 4 times 48 is 192. I can have up to 192 frog friends around me 24-7. I have a new goal for my character. <laughs> a town called Tinder. Be me, barbarian, playing in a 5th edition homebrew campaign in Eberron. Be not me. Necromancer, 
Druid and Ranger. The Necromancer recently got a big plot hook to go to a huge battleground. The Boneyard. Bones of powerful fallen warriors literally everywhere. Necromancer teleportation circles us in and the DM describes verdant green pastures, but if you look closely, the ground is lumpy. Nothing else around but a signpost on a gravel path. Tinder, 10 miles. Muffled giggles, DM. What? Me. Wait, so we're going to a town called Tinder in the Boneyard. The rest of the group starts giggling. <laughs> Oh, god damn it! I didn't even... A bit later, we come across a gnome merchant, who tells us that the town was burnt down every time they elected a new mayor. They really should have swiped right, says the druid. Yeah, it looks like it was too hot to handle, says the necromancer. All stops to the bone zone, <laughs> says the ranger. <gasps> it, I'm retconning it, and it's now called Gravel Town. You know, you got to appreciate that the DM made an attempt there. He didn't. It's. It, I, I feel bad for him because he didn't even notice it beforehand. <laughs> I just need this to be known. Today, one of my players rolled a crit with a Vorpal Sword against a Dolahan. Gunk moment. Be me. Level four Harrigan Gunk which is a monk with a gun. Be not me. Warforged Paladin, Human Cleric, and the Half-Orc Druid. Be the DM, the best person on Earth, because he gave everyone a free feat. We roll for stats. I get two 18s, a 7, a 13, a 10, and a 12. I put the 18 on Wisdom and Dex, getting a plus 2 and plus 1, respectively. The Gunner feat gives plus 1 to Dexterity. I now have 20 Wisdom and 20 Dex. I take the Monk class. I get Unarmored Defense and Unarmored Movement. I now have 40 feet movement and 20 AC at level 4 with no armor. I have plus 7 to hit with my musket. And I have minus 2 strength. In the first battle, I shoot the Yuantai and miss. I ask how much AC the enemy had and the DM says he had 12. I roll a 4. Plus 7, that's 11. Well, sucks to suck, says the DM. <laughs> Next turn, I attempt to jump in the air to do a 360 no scope. I roll a 1 to hit. My gun falls to the floor and breaks. <laughs> After the battle, and I'm in a town where I spend the entirety of my starting gold on a new gun. Proceed to one-shot the Wormling boss that the DM made after getting major buffs from the party. Gunk is the best class. <laughs> ah, my liver. BDM. Running a boss fight, of sorts. Make a joke about having eggnog if someone rolls a natural 30. Add that if I roll a natural 1, take a shot. Literally next roll I make, take a shot. <laughs> the boss fight continues and it goes fairly well for the party. My rolls when attacking the party included 3 natural 1s <laughs> in less than 10 rolls. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The player asks a question to see if the terrain is in the party's favor. He asks if the buildings had a window he could duck into. Not sure, so roll luck to see. Of course, that's when I roll a natural 20. And then I rolled 3 more 1s in that fight. <laughs> it really feels like the dice gods wanted you to get drunk during that session. <laughs> Alright, on that note, that's gonna be it for today's video, so thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you did and spread for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon as well as on YouTube as channel members, I appreciate it a lot, so thanks so much for that. Links below if you wanna check those out as well as links to the social media, Discord, or everything else. And uh, yeah, that's it, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye!